So it's, um, it's early June and we're in Worcestershire at the historic Shelsley Walsh. Uh, we're at the XK70 event, which is an event put on by the XK Club, Philip Porter's Club, to commemorate, celebrate 70 years of the launch of the XK engine. As we all know, that first was destined for the XK120, although ultimately it was really designed for the Mark 7. The 120 was created as a showpiece. Anyway, believe it or not, it's 70 years on from that time. Um, the XK engine, as we know, has gone on to power every Jaguar since, as long, uh, in addition to others, including this one, XJ6 from 1972. Uh, this is my car that I brought here today, and I brought my mother. And my mother, who of course was Pat Appleyard, has been reunited with her XK120, a famous rally car, NUB120. We've been up the hill, done a couple of runs this morning. Uh, I think she found it quite a bit more nostalgic than she really thought it was going to be. So she was quite touched and I'm really glad she came. Um, I think she's glad to have been dragged away from her farm for a little while. This is the life for me. I want to race, and uh, and then, and I remember Ian saying, "Well, you'd be much better starting with rallying." Then he asked me to marry him. He said he had two ambitions. One was to win the Alpine trial, which was the first ambition, and the <laughs> second was to marry me. Uh, and of course, I didn't think to. I just said, "Oh yes," because I wanted to do the Alpine trial. So so we got <laughs> married, uh, and. Um, I mean, to be quite honest, in these days, we'd, probably, we'd have gone off and done the Alpine Trail, yes. but it would have been unheard of for me to have gone off and done... Oh, it, you know, there's no way. It was, it was not far off the times when girls had to have chaperones, mm -hmm. you know. So um, in, the, in the early days, everybody was doing it just for fun and relief, and really nobody, hardly anybody expected to win, and it was just great fun. And then slowly it got more competitive and, and we got, you got the commercial aspect of all the different cars competing and it started to get a little bit more, well, competitive, I suppose. Um, we're at Lower Harford at my mother's home. Uh, Motorsport have been here today. Gordon Crookshank has uh, uh, been here to do an interview with mum. So she's been struggling to recall uh, what she can of her, of her rally days in the early days. And uh, it's been interesting actually. And it's, all sorts of things have been coming back to her. So in the early days, you know, people would enter any old thing. Because I remember Goff Imhoff, he staggered back, his throttle went and he was most ingenious. He managed to somehow fix some contraption where he got a bit of string and he was oh, managing to <laughs> accelerate with his hand out of the window. Um, I mean, people were most ingenious about the, how they kept their cars going. And I can remember once when we were very, very tight on time. Uh, we had several railway crossings come and stop us when it came to time. That was a bit agonizing. And I remember once going through a French funeral and there they were with all the horses and, and black things and <laughs> we were wondering whether we could dare barge through this funeral. <laughs> it's been great to have NUB here as well and uh, having the car just sort of puts the icing on the cake and uh, makes you realise what it was all about, the glorious noise of it, the wonderful shape 
it's the original car, the genuine car, so it's fantastic to have it here. It takes a while for you to get back into the mindset of it. Yes. I mean, I haven't driven a 120 for, I don't know, a couple of years. We were standing at the start of, of a rally and a chap came up and was looking at these clocks and we went into great detail as to how we could use them and that synchronised timing and everything. And we suddenly realised we were talking to Pathfinder Bennett. He oh, was, he, he exactly. presumably you know what mm, he was. Yes. He, he was the instrumental in, in using radar and leading all the bombers. Mm. He, he was the sort of absolute hero of, of the bombing. So RAF. Knew, knew a bit about accurate timekeeping. So time we, we felt a bit stupid. <laughs> That was a, a stupid article. I remember being irritated about that. I think it said I, I enjoyed cooking or something. Oh. And we put the strap on the bonnet because it flew open, which was rather terrifying on a motorway. Oh. I was rather pleased with this because I was, I was put with the Queen, Women of Achievement. Oh. And this is in and vogue. Is it, that picture was taken yes, by Norman that, Parkinson. Yes, that, that was really? in vogue. Oh. Yeah. That's a wonderful thing to have. Um, I must say, it does, bring, it does take me back to, to how it used to be. It's such an amazing noise, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I never thought it would sort of bring back this sort of feeling again, you know? I'd almost forgotten how it was. Before disc brakes, they were drum brakes, weren't they? Yeah. I remember sitting on these hot... We had to keep changing the drum brakes. In fact, we, we were praying for somebody to crash so we could go and pinch their brakes. <laughs> uh, and, and then I'd sit on the old ones and raiding somebody else's car. Yeah. You know, we'd get back at that. Is your car still down that ditch? We, we're going to go and get the, the brakes from it. Uh, yes, people would raid anything that went off the road. It was raided for spare parts. Well, we used to think we did a good job because we were testing the car. For, for the public because we, we just, you know, we discovered all the trouble with the brakes and all sorts of details we, we learned during rallies. I think that view down the bonnet is a, a big part of it and the noise. We took a Mark 7 in the end, we, we put racing seats in the front so the back was like a drawing room and, and once you got out of the towns, in, out of Oslo in Norway, it was just as you say, dust track. And whilst it was dusty, it wasn't too bad, but all the dust came in and then it rained and all the dust turned to mud. And I can remember every time we went round a corner, this mud swished backwards and forwards at the back of this, because it was an enormous gap at the back of us. We sat in these racing seats and, um, and then Ian lost it on a corner and we just went down a slope into some bushes. And I remember saying, I remember leaping out saying, push! And we didn't get it out for two days, actually. <laughs> it, um, Ian, Ian, yeah, Ian had to fly back and I was left to bring the thing back on the boat. I can remember that. And that, I think that was pre pretty much the last one we did. Absolutely. <laughs> Each time we'd been, of course, it was quite a novel thing to go to the south of France in those days because, you know, I'd never been abroad. I was 20 before I could leave the country because of the war. So I was just dying to have a bit of time down in the south of France. So, because the first time we came straight back. So the next time I said, oh, let's have a few days to have a, a few days sort of sunning ourselves. So we set off a couple of days before and we drove that was the time we found the brakes. We drove down as far as, I don't know where it would have been, about halfway through France anyway. And Ian said he wasn't happy with the brakes. So we turned all the way back and got Bill Haynes out of bed and they worked on the car all night. And then we went straight back again. I, I've, somewhere I've made a note of how many miles it was we did. It was thousands and there were no motorways. And we went all the way back and just got in time for the start. So bang went our holiday, so we didn't, didn't have any rest there at all. 
I just occasionally watch rally on the television now, and I, I, I can't equate this. It, they're all dressed up in. I mean, we'd have, we'd have absolutely refused to put a helmet on. We'd, it would have yeah. been far too uncomfortable. Um, but you know, whether they've all got the uniforms and labels all over them, I, I wouldn't have enjoyed that. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't have missed it for anything. We've had a fabulous day here at Shelsley Walsh at XK70. Um, it's, it's been a day of meeting lots of friends, lots of great people, lots of Jaguar enthusiasts. And it's been quite nostalgic. I think my mum has really enjoyed it. And uh, I've been very encouraged meeting so many friendly people. A lot of people are wishing me well with a new business venture that I'm planning. More about later. Um, but it's been a fabulous day in the Worcestershire countryside and but that's a wrap for now. Thank you.